All right, everybody, welcome to Intrenu University's hot seat of the night. We are so excited. Intrenu University bridges the gap between mentors and millennial entrepreneurs who are looking for answers to their business, but also to be part of a community to create a huge impact on the world. Tonight, we have Michael Irwin, who is going to be in the hot seat tonight, and we have three amazing mentors. I am going to be introducing who our mentors are. So, hey, Ben Baker, could you please Hello. tell us who you are, where you're at, and what do you do for a living? Well, as you said, my name is Ben Baker. My company is Your Brand Marketing. We're based in Vancouver, British Columbia, up in Canada. And, you know, that small little Olympic city that everybody forgot about. Mm. But uh, what do we do? We work with our clients. We consult we do workshops and we do keynotes on brand message, market, vision, and value. We, would, we tell stories. We tell people stories for them. Awesome. Yeah. Ben is the branding expert. Really, really excited. We're doing an event with, with Ben here in Denver, Colorado in May. More about that later. But I would love to introduce Judy Hoverman. Judy, tell us who you are, where you're at, and what do you do? All right. Well, I'm excited to be here. I'm Judy Hoberman. My company is Selling in a Skirt. And we do training, we do sales coaching, we do executive coaching, we do radio shows and everything else in between. But the best part about it is we do sales and leadership and that's a great combination to work in. Awesome, thank you for being here, Judy. Judy just released her latest book, so make sure you check her out, Judy Hoberman, and check out her new book, it's, it's phenomenal. Thanks. All right, and so our last but not least amazing mentor, Yuri Kruman, please tell us who you are, where you're at, and what do you do? Hey guys, I'm Yuri, I'm based in Brooklyn, as I like to call it, the other motherland. Um, I do startup advising focused on PR, media, and strategic partnerships. I'm also a Fortune 500 consultant focused on um, uh, HR transformation and change management as regards uh, millennials. And um, I also do a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one executive coaching for mid-career millennial executives. Awesome. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited for all our amazing mentors today. Thank you so much for being here. You guys are going to get here so much great advice towards Michael and so let's talk about Michael. Michael Irwin, you are our entrenial of the night. Please tell yes. us who you are and where you are and what is your business? Okay. Yes, my name is Michael Irwin. Uh, I'm here currently in the Dallas, Fort Worth area. Well, Dallas um, at the moment. And um, yes, my business, we're all about social media marketing. Um, I help clients uh, established or uh, work on their campaign to, to grow their social media and um, also a software developer, uh, software developer uh, um, in that I, I help build software or, or also um, websites or um, sales funnels, all of that. So that's, that's what I help my clients do. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Michael. So this is where we're going to get into the hot seat. So Michael, we're just going to start shooting off what your challenges are in your business and the mentors are going to just be here for you. And if you need okay. any help, just raise your hand and I'll pop in. Okay. So what is your first question? Well, um, so my business is fairly new. Um, I've, I've had a lot of success in, in um, attracting clients, which is awesome. Um, but I'm getting to the point where I'm not getting much sleep at night because <laughs> uh, there's a lot of work there. There's a, a time management is a huge um, issue for me. I'm uh, running all over the place. Um, yeah, what, what would be your, some of you guys' advice um, on maybe implementing a, some type of strategy or even if it's delegating or uh, what, what's, what's um, your time management, um, what does that look like for you? Well, I'll go first. I'll go for it, Judy. Okay, so <laughs> this, the skirt for selling in a skirt is actually an acronym and the T is time management. So that, yeah. there you go. So oh, one of the, th okay. yeah. So one <laughs> of the things I always tell my clients is you have to be able to block out time. Yeah. And what I do is I, I have a blotter size calendar and I put the things on the calendar in different colors because people are very visual. And when you look at it, you can see different things. So for me, the first thing I would tell you is you have to put down the things that you have to do, that only you can do. And if it's okay. revenue generating, put it in green because that means money, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, do you have a, do you have, do you have a family? Do you have a partner? Do you have anybody that you work with, live with? No. 
Okay, so that's good because then you only need to worry about you because otherwise there'd be like this one and this one and this one. Okay, so the yeah. first thing you do is the things that you have to do. The second thing you put on the thing are the, you know, your marketing because everybody forgets marketing. And when they yeah. say, yeah. well, I'll do it tonight or I'll do it tomorrow when I'm watching TV, you never do it. Get okay. it on your calendar. You know, phone calls, get it on your calendar, put everything on it. But with that, you have to have boundaries. You need to sleep, you need to eat, you need to exercise, you need to do other things because you can be so busy with your clients and then you get sick because you do nothing. So put down right. exercise, put down, you know, go to lunch, whatever it is. I put everything on my calendar so I'm able to block out time. And that is a really good way of staying focused because you can see it right in front of you. If you use your phone, you have to open your phone up, you have to look at this. If it's a big calendar, and I, I mean, I know everybody's really techie, take it out for a minute and just use old fashioned paper. Yeah. That, that would be mine. Okay. okay. Go ahead, Ben. Go, Yuri, you or me? Go, go for it. Okay. Uh, there's a book out there and I'm trying to remember what the name of the author is and I'll get it to you. It's, it's, about, it's, it's about deep work. And what it is, it's concentrating on the stuff that's the, that's the concentration stuff, the stuff that actually makes you money. The stuff that only you can do and everything else, find somebody else to do it. You know, right. it, it, something, as simple, something as simple as, you know, getting a 3D cover made for your book. You know, there is a million different places you can get that done and get it done cheap. And why are you spending the time and the effort doing that mm -hmm. when you could be spending that same hour working on something that's going to make you money and something that's going to benefit your clients? And, 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 yeah. and you're absolutely right. Whether it be your marketing or whatever, you know, systemize things, systemize yeah. things and figure out what you need to do and what things you can give to other people. And the stuff that's the $10 an hour stuff or the $15 an hour stuff that you can charge $50 an hour for give to somebody else. You know, it, there's nothing wrong with delegating to the point. And it's not that you have to have employees. Find, you know, find, there's a lot of people, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the gig market that are really talented at what they do and are able to do this stuff. And it's a matter of finding those people, finding people you trust, finding people you work with, people that you can relate to and offload the stuff that is, is not what you do well or the stuff that you're not, you know, that you don't like to do or the stuff that's not making you money and let yeah. them handle it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. I'm going to piggyback on that. Um, in addition to knowing who are trusted people that you can send work to, I would say that first of all, raise your prices. If you're having a lot of demand, it means your prices are too low. Yeah. And it means maybe you are either working with the wrong kinds of people or you're not giving them a full process of taking them from A to Z. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that once I decided to you know, I had one of those things where I joined the Forbes Coaches Council and um, I decided, you know what, I really need, to, I had a great coach at the time and she told me, listen, you're nuts, you have to raise your prices. So within about the course of two or three months, I tripled my prices for coaching. And you know what, yeah. the clients that I found were dramatically better. They appreciated yeah. what I was able to give them that much more. They were much, you know, uh, it was a much more transformative experience to were ready for it. The results were much better, testimonials, reviews, et cetera. And I essentially pulled myself up out of this vicious cycle of, you know, I'm a commodity and I'm commoditizing myself along with all the other tens of thousands of coaches, consultants, whatever. I pulled myself out of there. I raised my reputation. And I also found trusted partners, you know, let's say on a, a platform, in my case, it's called The Muse. Yeah. Uh, where if somebody says, okay, I can't afford you, I can't afford your premium packages, and say, look, there are lots of great, fantastic coaches that can do the piece-by-piece -piece work for you through this platform. You know, and people love that. They're like, wow, you're so helpful, amazing, and I don't need to waste my time on people that either can pay me or are not ready for the transformative work or are just not a good fit for me, right? And exactly. that's, that's how I was able to leverage my time and uh, spend it on, let's say, creating content or doing whatever else I need in my business, you know, and it's just me. So that's, that's the number one game-changing thing that I would recommend for you to do. If you're having a lot of demand, triple your prices, you know, yeah. dramatically change your business and don't look back. 
Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, also, Michael, the one other thing is because you're in the Dallas area, we have a yeah. lot of um, really good universities. They all mm -hmm. have entrepreneurial programs and they all yeah. have marketing programs and they all have uh, IT programs and they all have sales programs and they all have to do an internship. Yeah. And so right. you can actually bring somebody in for zero or for very little money, but you're teaching them some of the things that you don't need to be doing, like, the, like both of the, the amazing successful men that are right there um, are telling you this. So right. you can bring somebody else in and guess what happens to your time management? It's going to really you know, slow down a little bit because you're not gonna have to worry about, I have to get this done, I have to get this done. You have an intern. Yeah. So, I, I mean, that. that's, that's a really good thing. And you, I mean, you've got all the universities right there. You have UT Dallas, yeah. you have SMU, you have all of yeah. them. And they all yeah. have these amazing programs. So I would take advantage yeah. of that. But the one thing is, if you're going to do that, SOPs, standing operating procedures, you've totally. got to have them documented. Absolutely. Because you want to have a book of things that you can sit there and say, this is how we send an invoice out. This is how we produce something. This is how we do this. This is how we do that. This is how we do the other thing. I hired an intern to follow yeah. me around for a month and document okay. my SOPs. Yep. Okay. You know, it was the best thing I ever did because when you're doing something, you know, something like, you know, getting my newsletter out, getting my newsletter yeah. out is a 30 step process. You know, or, you know, and, and the thing is, is that, okay, writing it is the deep work, you know, the actual getting it, you know, getting it up online, getting it all the social media links, getting all that kind of stuff. You know what? I can give that to somebody and I can let them do it. But if, if it's not documented, if, it, if you don't understand exactly how it's done, then you're having to follow up with people and you're having to explain to them every time how to do it. Right. So the more yeah. you can systemize and the more you can get those things, you know, to a point where you can sit there and say, look, here's exactly how we do X. I need you to do this for me. Right. You know, the, the easier and, it becomes for you. Right. And then when you hire an employee, you already have that, you know, the policies and procedures right there. And so right. now here you go. So I totally agree. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Judy, um, it's, a, it's an excellent point you made. You should always look into, you know, there are different names for this. It could be in, interns, apprentices, right. students. There are always very highly motivated people. It doesn't have to be, you know, in person in Dallas. It could be anywhere in the world that want to help you market or sell. I, I wrote a few things in the chat box, uh, a few resources that I, I just wrote an article about this. Not a lot of people know this or realize this, but, uh, there's a company called GenM.co where they train students. They're up in Toronto. Uh, mm -hmm. They train okay. students to become top-notch marketers. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe not. Um, there's another um, resource called The Selling Factory. It's based in the, the University of Florida where they train a student sales force to you know, become salesmen, basically. And uh, it's you know, for very cheap or nothing. And also another resource, a lot of people don't know about this, but general assembly students who tend to be already very highly motivated and high level and intelligent, they all have to do keystone projects for their classes. Yeah. So yeah. either it's UX design or it's usability studies or whatever, but bottom line is there's always somebody who would love to do that work for free or next to nothing as training. Absolutely. And UT yeah. Dallas has a very big sales program. Very there big. There you go. There and you go. another wow. thing is up there is, is something called Upworks. Yeah, which is phenomenal okay. too. Because what I've done is I need to research. Like I had a paper I had to research, uh -huh. and instead of me taking all the time to do the research, I put it up in Upworks, yeah. and I got somebody that was a university, you know, a master's student, who actually yeah. went and did all my research for me, yeah. and it was perfect. Yeah, yeah. And then there's also Fiverr. You know, yeah, just, it, I mean, there's a million thing, a million ways you can get rid of some of the things to give you back some of your time. Because uh -huh. if, if you eliminated three hours of work for somebody, you gave somebody three hours, what could you do in three hours that was revenue generating? So you just yeah. have to start thinking, <laughs> just think of it differently. That's all. Definitely. Definitely. I thank you so much. This is all great. Great. Um, okay. We're done uh, now. Yeah. All yeah, right. yeah, yeah. No, no, all right. no, no. Who's buying dinner? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, yet. Yeah, no, no, please. No. I know that um, I know for me and for um, I would say a lot of um, other entrepreneurs, who they have that mindset of, oh, I, I have to do it because um, I'll do it right. And I'm letting that go. I'm having to let that go. And I'm learning to, to let that go as quickly as possible and, and uh, begin to delegate 
different tasks. So um, yeah, definitely all of it. Um, I guess the next thing, as I'm, um, I'm marketing myself, well, well, I'll go back to this question. Um, usually, one thing that I'm getting over is 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 um, I know that I have to go after the the money first. Sometimes uh, I'll get passionate or I'll like, oh, I want to help you with your project. Uh, I'll get started and then worry about the money later. I have to stop that. <laughs> So uh, what would be your advice on, on that? Uh, I mean, we have, we have standard contracts. Yeah. You know, we work, yeah. we work under an NDA, you know, non-disclosure agreements. We work under yeah. contracts. I, you know, I send the client a proposal at the end of the proposal, you know, is, is a room for them to put their signature on it. You know, the yeah. signature has the prices already, you know, has a signature, has the prices, once you know, once they've agreed to all that, uh, then we move forward until they, until they've agreed and they've signed the contract. It's not a job, you know. Yeah. And we even we even have work that we do. And you know, when we're when we're bidding on a project, you know, if somebody wants me to do a deep dive work for them, they're going to pay for that. You know, if they if they're looking for intellectual work before we even go under contract, there's right. you know, we we build a mini contract saying, listen, we'll you'll put a proposal together for you, but that's going to be 35 or 40 hours worth of work. Our charge out is X amount of dollars per hour. And then it's up to them. You know, my attitude is, you know, like Yuri, like Judy is, is if people can't afford me, that's fine. Yeah. But with me, I want to know that up front. Okay. You know, I want to know up front. If they can't afford me, I'll find somebody else or we'll work within their budget to do something. But they got to be committed that they're going to go ahead and they're going to be committed that they're going to pay yeah. or else there's no point. I would just add two things. One is skin in the game. You don't want to work with someone who's just sort of kicking the tires and eh, let me see what happens. No, waste of time. Goodbye. Thank you. No. And, um, you know, you want to stick to your guns. Meaning, mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. I just had a... Someone um, I was talking to last week, and I'm talking to him for two, three weeks. I sent him testimonials, reviews, you know, go, go talk to people I've worked with. He hasn't talked to anybody, he hasn't checked anything. And his first thing was, well, you know, I'll pay, I'll pay your fee. Money's not a problem, but I'll only pay you once I have results. I'm like, you know what? Well, that's lovely. You know, do, do people pay you for performance at your bank job? Is that, is that how things are done for you? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Best of luck, you know? Yeah. That's, right. that's, that's the end. You don't want to work with people like that. You don't want to be seen as some kind of, uh, I don't know what, you know, you put in hard work, you do great work, you have great results, testimonials. Yeah. You deserve to be paid well, and it has to be upfront, at least a substantial portion. Otherwise, adios, okay. amigo. Okay, so yeah. I have two things on that. Number one is okay. when somebody says to you, um, can I just pick your brains? Can you just help me out here? Whatever. I have a pick your brains fee. Yes. Like, like the okay. first, like first 15 minutes, you know, we can chat and everything else, but then there's, you know, there's uh, the, my rates and this is what it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the, the other part of that is you, you actually have to change your mindset. My first yeah. business coach told me that when she decided that her job was the CEO of her company, as opposed to the job person that was doing everything, when she became right. the CEO, her job was to bring revenue in. And when yeah. she changed okay. her mindset to that, her whole entire business changed. So yeah. you have to put that in your head that you're the CEO of your company and your one and only job is to create revenue to bring in. So the, the, your job is not to, you know, always be nicey nice. You can have X amount of people that you're actually going to give back because it's always good to give back. I mean, you know, I mentor yeah. a lot of young women. I do. But, yeah. but you yeah. also have to put, again, boundaries because you can right. be a nice guy and you'll be a nice guy that's starving. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> so, you, so you have to get be the put the CEO mentality in. But then also make sure that you charge what you're worth and that you, you can give a little bit because you have to give somebody, I mean, somebody's going to ask you like, why do they want to work with you anyway? Give them a little bit right. of content. Like what's wrong right. with that? But right. then you have to be able to actually, you know, charge people. Yeah. yeah. So for, for two things, it's just, you're right. It says never be afraid to ask what's your budget. You know, yeah. how much money do you have to spend for this? Because if all of a sudden somebody says, well, I've got $3,000 to spend, and your viewpoint is it's $10,000, you can say, well, that's really a $10,000 project. 
Yeah. You know, and it, it may, or it's going to be somewhere between ten and fifteen thousand. Pick a range, and then let them come back to you. They say, "Well, I only have three thousand dollars." Well, we can't do that for ten. You know, for three thousand dollars, we might be able to do this and give them a reduced package with a reduced number of services for that reduced fee. But don't ever do a ten thousand dollar job for three thousand yeah. dollars. Absolutely. Right. You know, give them right. give them something that's less. You know, less hours. You know, less deliverables. Less whatever that's worth the amount of money that they're willing to spend. Never give them the ten. Never give them the Cadillac for the you know for the Ford you know Ford Focus price. Right. And I would just add one other thing. This is actually very, this makes things very concrete. So you have a certain income goal. Let's say, I don't know, you want to make a quarter million this year, right? You know how many hours you're able to devote to your business. Yeah. If you want to be healthy, if you want to maintain a certain lifestyle, you're trying to do a lifestyle business, presumably, at least in some regard, if you went out on your own. So right. set strict limits, maybe you have your, you know, uh, walk three times a day, you have your gym, whatever, however many hours are left within that day, see how many hours that turns out into throughout the year. And then work backwards, divide your income goal by the number of hours. And then of course, put in a lot of wiggle room because you know that not all of your time will be spent productively you know, doing client work or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, maybe divided by three. And then you have a clear sense of what your time is per hour. Very, very right. important figure. Okay. Because even if, uh, let's say, you know, I do an un unlimited package, right? Meaning I'll support you for three months or six months for this price. I know yep. how many hours that's going to take roughly. Yep. Right, so I know what my hourly rate is. So if somebody comes back to me and says, well, I want to try you out for an hour or a session. No problem. Here's my rate. You know, and there's no two ways about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yes, no, no. And yeah. that already puts you in that mind frame where you're clear on who you are, the value that you add, the people that you would work with, the people that you wouldn't work with. And start saying no a lot. It's the same with guarding your time very zealously. Yeah. Right? Just as you right. say no to people that don't add value to whatever you're doing, whatever your mission is, say no to things that don't fit in that mission, whether it's you know, regarding your health or your business or whatever else. Mm -hmm. And when you start saying no a lot, a lot more than you say yes, suddenly you, know, you feel like a different person and others value your time, they value your advice, they value your services, right? And yeah. it, it's a very different story. You suddenly become a different human being. You're like, you know what? This is, this is it. This is my thing. Ownership mentality, right? Yeah. Judy yeah. yeah. And the other thing is my, my business coach told me when I was trying to figure out, like, like Yuri was saying about raising your rates and everything, somebody had said to me, you look like Neiman Marcus, but you're charging like Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's a really good visual, right? So my business coach said to me, I want you to look in the mirror. I want you to just pick a number. Just pick a number. And when you can say, let's say it's $20,000, here's what's included without gulping or giggling or choking or anything else, then you own it. So, right? Yeah. So, and, you know, and the first few times I did it, I was like, oh, my God, like I'm sweating. I can't really do this. Think about that because, you know, if you're growing as fast as you say you're growing, then either your prices are too low or yeah. what you're doing, no one else is doing and they have to have you. So then again, you can raise your prices, yeah. you know, but just yeah. be comfortable with it. Get the mentality going because that's the big part, the mindset. And then Definitely. just look in the mirror and say, you know, it's, it's 30 grand. Here's what you're getting. Here's what's included. And just, yeah. you know. <laughs> oh yeah, this is a, uh, this is great. I, um, it is a lot about. It's all about that. It's business. all. It's all here. Your whole business, your whole business it's all is here. about mindset. It's, That's it's right. Between here and here. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Oh yeah. That's oh yeah. Definitely, definitely. So, I, if if we could talk a little bit more about that, about the, I think uh, Judy, you had mentioned the, the CEO mindset. What does that um, What does that look like? Um, if you guys have some more comments on on that. Well, just think about the CEOs that. Do you know CEOs? Yeah. What's their yeah. job? What, what's their job? Their job is to create opportunities, to create money, right. to come in so they, the business stays intact. That's your job. Forget yeah, about yeah. all the stuff that you do because that's, like, okay. that's, that's the other side of it. Your job is really to bring money in. That's it. That's so right. how are you going to bring money in? You're going to give your clients the best you can. You're going to give your clients some services that they need. You're going to give your clients solutions that they need. And that's yeah. all wrapped up with a nice little bow 
with, you know, around a credit card. Yeah. There we go. Right? Right? There I mean, you, 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 you know, Ben, you, you, I'm sure you're yupping because you got it, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. It's, you know, I, I look at it as the difference between the entrepreneur, and it was funny, I went to a, uh, went to a workshop this weekend, and it was the, it, the difference conversation between the entrepreneurial uh, mentality and the business owner mentality. You know, the entrepreneur is the guy who's always out there, you know, innovating and innovating and innovating and innovating, where the business owner is looking at saying, what's the bottom line? What do we do? What's our business? How do we grow this? How do we build systems? How do we, how do we increase our cash flow? How do we, you know, how do we make sure that we bring more customers in? There's all that thought process mm -hmm. about being a business owner and being a CEO of a company. You're focused on here's the task. This is what we do. This is what we do well. This is what we do differently from other people. This is how we communicate it. This is how we do it. Here's our standing operating procedures. Here's how we build for it. You know, an entrepreneur is all about innovate, 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 innovate. And it's not focusing on the business itself. You know, so it's the more you can focus on being a business owner, the more you can focus on, you know, this is what we need to do to being better, bigger customers in or more profitable clients in or clients that we enjoy dealing with more, you know, uh, into the system, you know, and it really depends on what your goals are. Okay. The better off you're going to be, you, you know, the actual task of, of servicing those clients, you know, what yeah. those become operating procedures. Those are things that you can hopefully task off to other people as your company grows and as you become more profitable. Okay. Yeah. And one of the other things is talk about your team. Mm -hmm. Even even if it's just you, it doesn't matter because you're going to bring a graphic artist in or you're going to bring somebody else in. So talk about your team because that right. when you talk yeah. about your team, it's it's a it's a, also a different mentality and people yeah. are looking at you a little bit differently. You know, if you don't have 20 people working for you, who cares? You don't have to right. talk about 20 people, but you can talk about, so my attorney does this and my graphic artist does this and my financial plan does this and my, this one does this and this does this because you can't do it all yourself. And you yeah. actually seem to be more valuable when you have a team. Yeah. And right? they are part of your team. They are. They don't have, you don't have to, they don't have to be employees. You don't have to have them on retainer. They, but, but if you can reach out to somebody, Fiverr's your team. 99 Designs is my team. You know, like it doesn't matter. I would add a couple things to that. Um, I would say that also you're, you're the chief evangelist and that means yeah. Yeah. it's not all about, you know, the big idea. It's just, you know, tell a story, create a yeah. brand, make something unified and, and interesting and compelling where you take somebody who is your client or potential client through a process from A to Z. That process involves going through something that you've been through, whether it's through your own story before you started your own business or taking clients through that process. And that's really where you're putting your clients in, in a place where they, they visualize themselves as working with you and they, they are part of your mission. They're along for the journey. They're along for the ride. And it's very important because, you know, you don't want to be just another vendor. You don't want to be just another, you know, one of a thousand schmucks standing outside the door, right? You want to be the one who's the person to go to for your thing, for your niche, for your brand service, whatever. Right. So it's very, very important for you to know that story inside and out. And you have to be transparent. You have to say, look, you know, it's kind of like a buy low, sell high, right? When uh, I came in, everything was in ruins, not working well. There were no standard operating procedures. I came in, I set up their social media. Um, you know, I did some coding on the side, wh whatever your process is, right? And as a result, everything was sparkling and nice and, and brilliant. And you do that over and over and over. It's the same advice I give on the career coaching side, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's how you make yourself look good. And by definition, your company and your, your personal brand and your professional brand become essentially the same thing. Yeah. When you control yeah. your narrative, each audience will get a little bit different taste of whatever your story is. And you have to be a little bit nuanced in the way you deliver that story to each potential client. But in the end, once you see the patterns of, you know, who gets the best results from working with you, you'll start seeing the pattern in what in your story appeals to them and what gets them to work with you and what gets them the best results. 
That's where you should really focus. Again, you raise your rates and magic happens from there on. That's, that's been my experience. Yeah. I mean, I'm just looking at your website right now and, and you know, quite honestly, from my point of view, it's clickbait. Yeah. It doesn't tell a story. It, okay. it doesn't tell a story of why I should click on any of these buttons. You know, why, why should I trust you? Why should I click here? Is this thing going to go to some, you know, some Russian, you know, mob site somewhere? Uh, there, there doesn't, you know, there, there's, there's nothing compelling. There's no, there's, there's nothing that tells the story about you. You know, it right. doesn't, you know, there's, there's not enough there, you know, unless somebody is just, you know, has click a you know, which a lot of millennials do, uh, which is a good thing, you know, but, and then, you know, you've got them, but, there's nothing there that's compelling enough to sit there and say, why should I click on this? Why, why do I need to find out more? You know, what, what is the number one rated strategy to grow your, your business fast? You know, click here, you know, it'd be, it might be click here to find out more and then have a story that tells that story. Mm -hmm. And from there it says, click here, click here to, you know, to, to deal with, you know, to, to Michael, um, okay. you know, but you need to tell the story. You need to tell the story about what's, you don't, you know, you don't give it all the way but you need to give people some type of an evidence of why they should care about you. Yeah. Okay. And, you, and you have to make it really easy. Like you have to say, click, you see this purple button, click here with your right finger. You have to make it really easy for somebody to actually do that. And it sounds ridiculous, especially where millennials are born, you know, like in utero with this, but it doesn't yeah. matter because yeah. you have to make it as simple as possible. If you don't, people are going to walk away. They, they just, they'll, you know, they have an attention span of like this much. So yeah, Just make it definitely, easy. definitely. Uh, I definitely agree. And I, and to be honest, um, the clients that I have now um, know me. So I think that, you know, I just have to be a, a better, do better at um, sharing who I am and, and my story. Um, you want, you want clients who haven't got a clue who you are. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, <laughs> because the truth of the matter is we go, we all go through our friends and family very yeah. quickly when we're starting a business. And the truth of the matter is those are your worst clients. Absolutely. Those are absolutely the worst clients you've ever had in your life because they want everything at a discount and they demand everything. They say, well, you're my family. Oh, you're my friend. You know, do me a favor. I can't afford to pay you this month. I can't afford to pay that rate. Uh, just do this little extra work for me. You, you know, come on, do me a favor. You're a friend. You know what? Get rid of those people. Those are not the people you want as long-term clients. And they're not always that nice. They're saying like, are you kidding me? You're really going to yeah. charge me that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not paying that bill. Yeah. Yeah, you do it. And then what do you do? Yeah. 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 Um, I do have a, I know who my target population are. are and um, yeah. They are so who is, your, who is your target population? Yeah, well, let's get in who, there. Well, what for me, you know, I, I have a background, I have a charitable background and, um, and I love working with people who are making a difference or who are wanting to make a difference in the world, not just uh, grow their business and be successful, but, but, but give back. Um, so what do they well. look like? So, what do they look like? Yeah. Where do they look um, like? What do they smell like? Where do they, they where do they hang, where do they hang out? What do they read? Who are they, you know, where it's, who are the thought leaders? What kind of money do they have? You know, Can they afford so, you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I would say, you know, they, they are, they're making some pretty good money. They're just looking for ways to, to make a difference. They're looking for ways to leave a legacy. Are they male? Are they female? Are they young? Are they old? Um, male or fem female. Maybe a little bit older. Older than I am. Uh, maybe um, 50s and up. Okay, so let me just say one thing to you. If I was with you at a networking event, and I uh -huh. said to you, how can I support you? And you just told me who that was. I would have no idea who I could support you. Not a clue. And I'll tell you no. why, because it's okay. too, it's this, you're, it's, it's too big. Rock. And I would have pulled the curtain down and say, okay, great. Thanks. See you later. But if you, <laughs> I don't know who you're looking for. I right, can't help. You. If you, right. Because it's too much. Okay. Too and much. I mean, you don't want to also go so narrow that it's only moms with twins either, because that's also no. a little bit, but, but who's your person? Is it male? Is it female? Okay. So now they're 50 years old. They make a lot of money. What is a lot of money? Do, is there an industry that they're in? Like, where do you find them? Are they LinkedIn? Are they Facebook? Are they Instagram? Are they Snapchat? You know, come keep going right. like this and then name your person. My, per, my person is yeah. Jennifer. I don't have yeah. any idea why she's <laughs> Jennifer, but when I was putting her together, it reminded me yeah. of a Jennifer. Yeah. 
So I can name my person. That's what I'm saying to you. Like, don't just, you know, like it's great to want people that want to make a difference. Okay. But who are they? What are they making a difference in? And what kind of industry are they working in? So you can, yeah. you know what I mean? And what kind of employees do they have? You know, what, you know, you know what's, what's the, mo- what's the motivation for, for wanting to give back? Right. You know, I mean, I got you. I got you. That's, um, and that's not something you can answer in two seconds either. No. I mean, right. you really, you really have to sit down. If you want, I'll send you the questionnaire I give my clients. Okay. You won't, you won't talk to me after that, but it's okay. <laughs> I'll send it to you. Yeah. Yuri, are you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? I can yeah. hear you. Okay. It, the, yeah. the, it looked like the, the, uh, the video got uh, a little delayed, but as long as I can hear you. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm not sure where my, my video is stuck, but yeah, yeah it's stuck here, but it's okay. <laughs> so what do, you, what do you say, Yuri, about knowing your person? Well, that's, that's really the first step to, you know, a business that can grow somewhere because, you know, in, in my mind, okay, I'll, ju- I'll just run through this exercise for myself, right? So, oh, he's um, back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's back. <laughs> Hello. Um, yeah. So um, my ideal client is, again, this is after a lot of kind of looking for patterns and understanding who, sure. who gets the best results and who can pay. Um, so for me, it's, let's say, uh, John, who's uh, 33, works in an investment bank, um, has a lot of disposable income, is around vice president director, wants to go to tech, is in New York, um, someone that reads a lot, someone who's very intellectually curious tends to be toward the side of very good communicator, but doesn't really know how to get across that bridge. So I'm, I help them to get across that bridge. Yeah. Okay, and I know what they read, where they hang out, their disposable income, and uh, what, what they're looking to do, where they're coming from, where they're going, and where I can help them, what elements of my story appeal to them. Meaning uh, I've been in finance, uh, I'm someone who's worked in tech, I'm mm-hmm. a career coach, executive coach. Uh, I understand startups because I advise them as well. So I know the language and I know the psychology of both them, my ideal clients, and the language and psychology of the entrepreneurs with whom they hope to work. Right. So those things yeah. close off any kind of leaks that they might have in their mind as to, well, I'm not sure it's a good fit. And it yeah. works. And, and it also allows you to sit there and say, these are the people I can help. Everybody else on, on, on the sides, I don't care about. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, I, I, okay. I, you know, I'm, I'm sorry if you've got a problem, but that's not what I focus on. Yep. You know, yeah. You know, to, to a point. I mean, we all, there's always outliers, but for the most part, if you can sit there and say, this is my lane, this is what I do, these are the type of clients that I help, and this is why I'm successful, you right. can be far more powerful as a business. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. And you can also talk to your strategic partners and say, this is who I'm looking for because yeah. they're already in your space. They're already collecting money and they compliment you, not compete with you. And if they know right. that this is your person, then they can refer people to you. If they don't know who your person is, like if somebody said to me, well, you know, I'm looking for people that make, you know, their company is like 25 to 50 million. I don't have their bank account. <laughs> How would I know? All right. You know, I'm not, I, I don't have a, you know, I can't look everything up while you're talking to me. Give yeah. me something that I can work with in front of yeah. you that at least I can say, you know what, let me go back because I think I have a couple of people for you. Right yeah. now, it's like, Ooh. You can say, well, they're 10 to 100 employees. You may not know, you may not know the size of the company, but they say, okay, they've got but somewhere between 10 and 100 employees. Right, so they don't right. work out they're of their They're probably home. somewhere in that range. Right, so you know they're not working out of their home office. Right. You know, so we eliminate yeah. all of those people. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. And anybody wow. who's got in the Fortune 500 category, yeah, well, we're not, those aren't our clients either. Yep. Okay. Okay. Wow, my brain's just turning, turning, turning. So much greater. That's that's sense. the job. <laughs> our job is to put your brain upside down, flip it right back up again, and and kind of push you in the right direction. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. It, you know, I, I have some um, some i have history of of going through this exercise with others but i guess i've never in so i guess in depth done it for myself so i guess that's where i'm learning wait Uh i need to reassess and and um this is yeah this is powerful (laughs) sometimes you have to go back to basics yeah so you can go forward again 
And we all do that. Sometimes we take shortcuts and then we're like, wait a minute, what happened over here? Because I forgot who this was. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Definitely. Right. Definitely. So. Definitely. So, yeah. so in creating my story, well, first, I guess, figuring out my, my target population. Um, I know, Ben, that you, you are the story expert. What type of advice would you, would you have um, for that? You know, it's for me. It's it's coming down to what do you believe? It's right. what what do you do well? What you know? What are you passionate about? What do you, what are the things that? What are the type of clients that you actually enjoy working with? And and what problems can you actually solve for them? I'm a big right. believer of start with people with problems. If you yeah. start with people with problems and and you know and sit there and say these problems, I actually have a solution for. Life is much easier. If you can just say, you know what, Mr. Customer, I know you're feeling this pain because I've got five other customers that have similar pain points. Yours is not going to be exactly like theirs. You're not, yeah. you know, I hurt here, somebody else hurts here, but it's all in the same thought process. And you say, you know what, we have solutions that can help solve the problems you're already having. Mm -hmm. And that's the key okay. thing. If you start saying, I've got a sliced bread maker. Mm -hmm. And everybody around you is already sitting there going, you know what? I like pulling hunks of bread and just shoving it in my mouth. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if everybody, if everybody, you say, I have sliced cheese and everybody says, yeah, but I like, you know, I like just chewing off the big hunk. Yeah. It's not a problem. So find this, find the people with the problems first. And then sit there and say, okay, this is what I do. But the, the story comes down to how do I relate to these people? How do I relate to these people that, you know, are already, you know, part of a tribe? They didn't, may not understand they're part of my tribe yet, but, but they are, you know, because these are people that I can help. These are people that I know that I can mm -hmm. actually help because I've helped other people like them before. Mm -hmm. And that's the story you want to tell because it's not about you as a brand. It's about how they value you. Right. Yep. I would uh, add on to that. You know, in my case, I, I do this a few times a week. I go on podcasts and I kind of, uh, how do I put this? <laughs> I kind of spill my guts out, right? About all my struggles and all the things I've been through and whatever. And the, the thing that I've learned, I was born very introverted, you know, to academics for parents, Soviet immigrants. I mean, forget about sharing, especially anything that's too personal. So for me, I had to yeah. go all the way through that spectrum to the other side where, in my case, my story is my greatest asset, which includes all my, all my flaws, all my mistakes, uh, all the pitfalls, all of it. And what, where I learned this from, I would strongly recommend you to take a look at his work if you don't know it yet, James Altucher. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't know if, you, uh, if you're familiar with him, but I uh, actually put out a book recently called Reinvent Yourself. Mm -hmm. And okay. Um, okay. incredible yeah. book. You should, you should certainly read it. My point is that instead of seeing your mistakes and you know, all the problems that you've seen as something to hide, to put it in the closet, in the woodwork, whatever, Use it in the opposite way. It's a massive it asset. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And it's actually practice it with smaller things and bigger things because people will want to work with a human. They'll want to work with someone who right. gets that they're not just, you know, the title CEO next to them or, yeah. or social media manager or whatever, right? You want people to relate to you and to know that you're doing this buy low, sell high thing all the time. For yourself mm -hmm. first you're doing it well and it really becomes a source of massive strength and you also you know law of attraction <laughs> you yeah. also start attracting people that are similar to you in certain yeah. specific ways and usually in, in good ways you have to go through that process where you eliminate the wrong clients and you start working with the right ones and then you can really relate to them, get better results, charge more and, and everybody wins. It's a virtuous cycle. And I was going to say that um, a very wise woman told me that if you go back to when you were five or six years old, there's something that happened then that is brought you to where you are today that 
gave you the reason to be passionate about something today? Like my father told me at five years old that girls didn't do this and girls didn't do that. So yeah. what did I, what do I do now? As I tell women, girls do do this and girls do do that, you know? So yeah. it's, it's pretty interesting. But as a speaker, I also, you have to tell a story. You don't yeah, walk up there and right. say, hi, I'm Judy Hoberman. You don't even talk, you, you don't even <laughs> give your name. You know, that's not how you start. You start with a story. story. So yeah. you bring people in. Well, the story is something you should be able to tell to one person or a hundred thousand people, Yeah. you know? And yeah. so, so think about what makes you do what you do. Why do you love what you do? And why are you able to help somebody get over the hump that they're on, that they're, you know, in because of what you do? What is it that, you know, like, what do you, what is, what makes you unique? Why does somebody raise their hand and say, I want to work with Mike. I want to work with him. And here's why. And if you don't know what your greatest assets are, or what makes you unique, ask somebody, ask your friends, ask your family, ask a client and say, why did you work with me? Or what makes me different? Why would people want to work with you? you should yeah, but don't ask your mom. Yeah, don't ask your mom, but don't you should, ask your mom. <laughs> you, should, you, should, but you should have all of those, you know, around you. And if, if people are saying things to you, well, you're this and this and this, and you don't like it, then you have to go back and revisit that and think like, well, I didn't think I was like that, you know? But here's the thing. There's two books. I just put them in the comments. It's, one is called okay. Freak Factor mm -hmm. by Dave Rendell. And I actually just interviewed him, him this morning. And the other one is by David and a guy by the name of Stan Phelps called uh, uh, Pink Goldfish. Mm -hmm. okay. And both both look at the fact that it says people draw on on their on their unique factors and their your strengths are what other people have called your your weaknesses as you grow up. You know the fact yeah. that you know people call you assertive. Well, no, I, you know the, you know, you you flip that around. If people call, you know people call you bossy, no, wait a second. I'm you know what I'm doing is I'm, I'm helping I'm helping my customers get you know what being a strong advocate for, for my clients. You know, there's, it's understanding how you spin it in a positive way because, you know, so many people will put you down. So many people will tell you that you're, that you're wrong, that you're different, that you're strange, that you're this, that, the other thing. Embrace it. Embrace the little things yeah. that make you unique and make you different. That's right. And those are your, those are your greatest strengths. You know, people always focus on, on the, on the little pimple on their head. You know, they, you know, they have this beautiful smile and, and a wonderful, you know, cheekbones and they worry about this little pimple. And you know right. what, if you forget about the pimple and you, and you, and you just sit there and say, the pimple is what the pimple is. And I'm still a beautiful person. You know what? That's, that's the magic. Mm -hmm. And it, whether it's you personally or whether it's you as a business, you know, don't focus, you know, because there's always going to be people that are going to be hate. There's always going to be people who don't like you. There's always going to be uh -huh. people that think you're wrong. They're not your clients. They're not the ones putting money in your pocket. True. Yep. True. Wow. Yeah. You know, Coca-Cola doesn't have a hundred percent penetration. No, I'm not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> Pepsi guy. Yeah, that's right. I, you know, somebody take them off the air. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and sometimes that person who doesn't see things the same way is living with you, and maybe it's your wife, maybe it's your mother, or whatever. And you have to fight that, you know. Maybe uh, I, I always, when I was starting my coaching business, you know, my wife said, "How in the hell do you think you're going to sell a three thousand dollar package to anybody? Who the hell would want to pay that kind of money?" And I'm like. Watch. Yeah. <laughs> Watch. Sure enough, you know, raised my prices and found the right people. Absolutely. Yeah. She's an engineer. So, she, you know, for her, it's a very different thought process. You just have yeah. to yeah. know that not everyone is on your wavelength and that's fine. They're not your clients. They're not, you don't that's have true. to work with them. Not everybody is your client, period. Yeah. True. You know, that's, yeah. true. that's the way it is. Yep. And the one true. thing I, you were just saying is just going through is just that, from from the bio that you sent us earlier, and the thing is, is you need to narrow it down. You right. you 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 got to stop saying I do this and this and this and this and this and this and this. You know, yeah. tell us tell a concise story, because the more you can t people understand exactly what you do, people right. can people can hook onto it. If it's a concise yeah, story, and people say I do this for these type of people, and this is why, and this is how we've been successful, you know, in the past. People can relate to that. Right. If people say you do 12 different things, they go, well, what does he really do? Right. 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 And the other thing is you have to be the expert at what you do and you have to own that title. 
Yeah. I am the expert in whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And just yeah. keep saying it and believing it and owning it. And people will start to look at you as the expert. And like, there's no one else I, that you can go to. They have to go to you. Yeah. So but be authentic. Be, yeah, be an expert totally. in something that you can actually be an expert in. And, <laughs> yeah. and even right. an expert, no, but even an expert says, you know what? I'm not sure. That's a great question. Let me get back to you. Find out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody can have all the information. Even on a very narrow, specific topic, nobody has all the information. Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, um, yeah, yeah. Definitely, I, I can think of so many stories, uh, of, or, or even my why. Um, I think about it daily, and um, I just have to, I think I, I need a, have to relay that to to my potential clients well you have to know your why but you also have to know their why their why yeah. as well and yeah. once you have their why that's it's all over because mm -hmm. yes. when you hear it in their words and you can, you can go back and say so this is what it is that's it i'm telling you once you have that but you have to yeah. remind yourself of your why why are you doing this why do people yeah. why should people work with you yeah. Definitely. Huh. Okay. How about we ask you some questions? Yeah, go right ahead. <laughs> All right. What's uh, have you given much thought to press, media, strategic partnerships, anything of that sort? Where are you in that process? Uh, of course, of course. Um, I am. Um, I have a few partnerships. Uh, uh, in line. Uh, one is, is amazing. Uh, her name is uh, Josevi Jackson. Um, her business is uh, fouryearcoach.com. Uh, you can check that out. Um, and uh, with, with media and press, yeah, it's, it's, it's sharing my story. And uh, I'm just, I've, I've, uh, I have a plan to, to share it. I'm just trying to see how deep, or I'm also that, that introverted uh, <laughs> person. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah, just, just, trying to figure out exactly how, how deep to go with, with the story or, or where to go with the story. Or Most deep. of us are introverts. Most of us are introverts. Yes. Don't, don't, yeah. seriously, yeah. seriously. Most of us I'm are. I'm not, but you know what? You're not doing I, okay. I was also the other guy that you know, stood up in class when nobody else told me to sit down, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. But yeah. you have to go deep. You, you have to go yeah. Yeah. much, much deeper than you ever imagined because that's where the magic is. Really, yeah, you, you can imagine. You can, you can serve so many more people when you really know yourself and know that, you know what, it doesn't matter how low it is and I don't know, I've been homeless or uh, I've, I've been unemployed, God knows what, and yeah, okay. Right. <laughs> you know, that means that nobody can tell your story for you. Nobody can yeah, mess right. around with you and tell you who you are, who you're not. You own it. You know what you've been through. Nobody can mess with you. And that, right. from that source of strength, that's your foundation. Yeah. You, can, yeah. you can deal with anything and anybody from there. I agree. That's, that's what I found, especially when you're an introvert. Yeah. You, you have to have that basis. Otherwise, there's no point. Absolutely. Otherwise, the goalposts are shifting always. Yep. I agree. Yep. I always tell people, if you really, really, really want to know me, watch my TED Talk. Because mm -hmm. that you'll, you'll know more about me than – because if I'm telling you the story, I, it's, it's hard because I'm very vulnerable – and even this story that's 40 years later, I can still feel it. So that's what I tell people. There, there's my story right there. So, yeah. you know, just tell it. The other thing is yeah. when, when Yuri asked about media and press and everything else, do you write articles for people? Do you write, are you do guest blogging? Do you, you know, and it doesn't have to be in your, like I write for Annuity Outlook. I don't do any okay. annuities, even though I have a financial background. They mm -hmm. said we want everything but annuities. Right. Yeah. Correct. You know, right. so so start getting your name out on a consistent basis as the expert. That's yeah. you know, there's just another way. Guess do a do guest blogging, go on podcasts, but just yeah. get yeah. your name out constantly, constantly, constantly. And yeah. make sure that whatever story you're telling, make sure it's consistent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, whether whether you're blogging, whether you're on a podcast, whether you're on a webcast, whether you're you know, whatever you're doing, whether you're just talking to somebody in the in, next door to you in, in Starbucks. The story needs to be consistent. Totally. Right. This is who we are. This is what we do. 
this is who we do it for, and this is how we can help them. Okay. And I would actually go one step further. I mean, partly because this is my emphasis, you know, I okay. teach us at a startup accelerator, but for me, PR media and strategic partnerships are in a way the, the fastest way to get outsized results. Agreed. Okay. Because, you know, that's, that's just how it is. People will not trust you unless they really know you, they, they feel know you. you, they relate to you. Yeah. And you have to go out there against your nature perhaps and, and really spend a consistent amount of time every week writing, reaching out, getting on podcasts, reaching out to journalists, having those conversations. And there, there's a rhyme and a reason, you know, to how to do that. You can obviously, you know, have that conversation offline. Yeah. But focus on it, make it a consistent part of your weekly schedule. Otherwise it'll take you a lot longer to get where you want to go. Yeah. And make sure you have a calendar. Yes. You know, so you yeah. know what you're speaking about when and why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Oh, Anastasia's wow. back. I am back. back. Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs> Michael, um, you feel like you got some value out of this hot seat from our amazing mentors. So much value. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I am. Um, yeah, I hope this is recorded because I couldn't save everything. So. <laughs> Absolutely. We're going to have this recorded. It will be on YouTube ready for you um, to play okay. back for sure. I'm also going to be sending you the notes from the chat. And we had a lot of people on social media giving you some advice too. So I'm going to be sending that to you as well. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Yeah. And um, they're all over your website as well, which is great. <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> For sure. All right. Well, this does conclude our hot seat. Again, just want to thank all of our mentors. We have the great Ben Baker. We got Judy Hoberman. And down below, we have Yuri Kruman for the hot seat with Michael Irwin. If you haven't seen Michael Irwin yet, you'll see his link in the, the chat below or in the link in the YouTube video and all that jazz. Check him out, check out all of our mentors. They do amazing work in an entrepreneurial university. So this concludes the hot seat. I hope everybody enjoyed and got some feedback. We are gonna close and we will be having an event tomorrow with the great and amazing Koi McDermott. So see you then.